You are in the chaos. You are swirling in the drama. Is it possible to press pause? Is it possible to exit a dramatic, chaotic, high conflict situation in peace? Well, before I answer that question, let me introduce myself. My name is Marissa Senya. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I am a freedom coach. I help women who are feeling trapped in unhealthy relationship dynamics by providing strategic guidance and resources so that they can have the confidence, clarity, and support that they need in order to make a peaceful exit from relationship dynamics that no longer serve them. I help women who um, have long struggled with prioritizing themselves and their own needs to finally say, you know what, it's my time. So that's kind of the content we are gonna be unpacking in this, in this channel, the ins, the outs of difficult relationship dynamics, and also the beauty and the joy and the triumph of going on that journey of prioritizing yourself as, as women. So if that's a topic that sounds interesting to you, um, definitely feel free to like and subscribe to the channel so that you are in the loop and anytime I, I share a new video. All right, so let's get back to that original topic. So um, I wanted to unpack the name of you know my company, Peaceful Exit, it, and as it pertains to unhealthy relationship dynamics, is it possible to, to still walk away from something that is harmful, um, that is hurtful, that where you're losing your sense of self um, in peace? Well, I think the first part of answering that um, is to, to unpack a little bit about what a peaceful exit is not before I talk about what a peaceful exit is, right? A peaceful exit isn't devoid of drama, right? A peaceful exit isn't without chaos, right? So yes, there are times in life where we can look at other people's situations that maybe, you know, were great and it was a kumbaya situation when two people decided, you know what, this is no longer working for either of us. Let us go our separate ways and yet let's still maintain a beautiful, respectful relationship, especially if they had children together and have a beautiful co-parenting relationship. That's amazing. And I'm sure that that's what came to your mind when you heard the phrase peaceful exit as it pertains to relationships. Um, and yeah, that is the stereotypical um, thought or assumption that this is what it looks like. It's everybody being friends. It's everybody being on the same page. But the reality is that's not the majority of women's situations when it's time to leave a relationship. Um, 70 to 80 percent of the time, you know, divorces are initiated by women. So it means that one person wanted something to end and the other person didn't. So what does that look like to kind of to say, okay, enough is enough, it's time to choose me. Um, when we talk about toxic relationships, it's, it can be even dangerous to say, I want to end this relationship or it's time to um, reassess and change the way that we relate to one another. Um, not as partners anymore, but let's change the dynamic of the relationship. That can even be dangerous. So a peaceful exit isn't devoid of drama. Drama, drama can be in, in, in there. You can be in the midst of chaos. And yes, a peaceful exit is possible because a peaceful exit is, it pertains to you, right? Because you can't control the other person that you're in the dynamic with. You can't control the entire environment that you are in, you're in the midst of. But you know what? You still have autonomy over yourself, right? And so 
while there, you know, while there is a dramatic situation, while you are in the midst of something chaotic, you can still have a graceful, a peaceful exit from it, right? And one way that you are able to do that is by prioritizing listening to your gut, prioritizing listening to your intuition, okay? As women, we have been conditioned to prioritize ourselves less, to put ourselves last, to think of others first, and to think of ourselves after everybody else's needs have been met. Everybody could be, you know, family members such as, you know, the partner, um, the children, um, the, the co-workers, the management, the supervisors, um, the community spaces that we tend to be a part of. It's prioritizing others' needs over our own. And so that is something that we've kind of been trained to do since childhood. And so we have to go through a, you know, a programming. We have to you know, go through this reprogramming of ourselves of saying, hey, what, what do I want? And actually sitting with ourselves, right, to listen, right, instead of suppressing um, that need, suppressing that inner voice that is quietly um, calling for us to, to listen and to prioritize our needs. We've been, we're really good at not doing that. And so the first step to, to leaving a toxic situation in peace is by making space for your intuition to speak loudly, right? To speak clearly making space to actually hear yourself, right? Um, and the beautiful thing about that is there can be so much fear um, and the fear is real, right? Um, the fear is very real and I don't wanna minimize anybody's fear of leaving a harmful situation. Um, having walked with people, having walked with, you know, gosh, hundreds of women that were transitioning from difficult situations and some men who are also transitioning from difficult transitions uh, situations, as well as navigating my own set of, you know, complicated life transitions. I, I don't minimize for one moment uh, the very real fear that comes with making a different choice, okay? but it starts, the peace starts from within. So regardless of the chaos, regardless of the drama that may be swirling around you, making space for your intuition to, to speak and for you to listen, to hear yourself, is the first step um, to having a peaceful exit. And it's possible. It is possible to hear that inner voice in the midst of the drama, in the midst of the chaos. But the next thing that comes with making that space is start is to prioritize time to yourself, right? Oh my gosh, like how do I do that? I've got so much going on. This, this is the agenda of the kids, the job, you know, you know, the, still trying to keep this thing, you know, the partner and not make this other person upset. Uh, all the all the things, right? The community groups. Yeah, I hear you, sis, but none of that is as important. None of that, okay, is, is going to move the needle on improving the quality of your life if at the end of the day, at the end of the night, when all is said and done, you are just burdened with the misery, right? You are, you are burdened with the situation that you're in and it's taking a toll. It's taking a physical toll. It's taking an emotional toll, right? So the next step in a peaceful exit is prioritizing time for yourself. How can you make a plan? How can you move into a space where you can actually hear what you need um, if you don't make time for yourself, right? To nourish yourself. Okay, to hear yourself, to have clarity, it takes prioritizing yourself. So the same way that you're prioritizing 
all those other people in your life, you need to put yourself on that list and it needs to be a lot higher, a lot higher. It's not after the kids go to bed. It's not after everybody else. No, 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 no. Sis, I need you to push yourself up to the top of that list, right? To start prioritizing your own needs. A peaceful exit is possible when you start listening to your intuition, when you start making space to prioritize your needs, right? It is possible, it is doable. Those are the ways, those are just the beginnings of how a peaceful exit can happen. So those are the two things that I wanted to share um, with in, in this time frame is to think about, but not without giving you a homework assignment or anybody watching this, right? Um, is how can you create space for yourself, right? Is it um, waking up, you know, 30 minutes before everybody else, right? To meditate or to journal, right? Is it going for that morning walk by yourself, right? What does it look like to hear from yourself, especially at the start of a day? Because man, those early hours, that's just, that'll do something to you, right? If you don't start that day and ground yourself, what does it look like to ground yourself, okay? So those are the ways that we, we start to, to get a hold of what's going on inside of us, regardless of the chaos that might be going on around us, the peace starts with us, it starts within. And that's the part, sis, that you have control over. Can't control anybody else's reactions, can't control anybody else's circumstances, everybody has to go on their journey, but you can listen to yourself. You can start with your own journey. You can start by prioritizing you. Okay, so I'm gonna end there and with, for your homework assignment, because you know, coach life, there's a homework assignment at the end of every conversation. Think about a way that you can start to make space for your intuition to hear from yourself. And if you've been doing something and that routine has gotten stale, think of a new way, right? Think of a new way. And I'd love to hear uh, some of those ideas in the comment section. What are some of the new ways that you are making space and room for yourself? All right, so that is all for now, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, keep well.